Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with our crocheted block for April. I am doing a crochet block of the month for this entire year, 2024, and we are up to April's block. I put the new ones out every month on the 15th. So on May 15th, come back to get block number five. This is block number four, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. I do the blocks in advance now, and then I'm going to still show you the swatch. I didn't quite finish because I wanted to show you guys um, how I was finishing on the very end. I was just looking at videos, and I found a woman who does some cool stitches, but she doesn't give any names, and I liked it. The only thing I didn't care about it was it was uh, very puffy and it was really cool but I didn't want it to like stand out drastically from the other blocks I'm making so I thought to myself self I will just make it less puffy she was calling them puffs and I really liked it and then as I was looking at other videos I saw others that looked very much like mine and I uh, looked at it, and they were called Bean Stitch. But again, they were very puffy. And I said, all right, I could go with something like Mini Bean or Flat Bean or something. And then I found a video uh, of a person, and the title was Mini Bean Stitch. And it is exactly this stitch. And she did it with less puff, just like I did. She did a few other things a little bit differently. And so I'm just going to show you the way I did it. But we're calling it Mini Bean. I think that might be what it's actually called. And you can always go look at the stitches on other videos if you don't understand the way I explain things. I still have not come up with a join. I'm so sorry. I wanted to have the first three uh, squares put together for you by the time I did this one, but I didn't. But I will. I don't want you to be waiting until the end to join everything. So I will be coming up with a join so we can join as we go. Um, it's just a little bit complicated because we don't have the same number of stitches. And I'm telling you, my blocks, they shrink depending on the stitch. Some are smaller than when I ended. Some are bigger. I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to make it all work. I mean, there's no other choice, right? Except I do have an idea. If a block, you know, is much smaller than your others, like, you know, maybe like a whole entire half inch smaller or something, we could always do like a row of single crochet or something around it to uh, make it a little bit bigger. We can work magic. We really can. All right, I'm going to get my swatch yarn and I'm going to show you how we're going to do the mini bean stitch. Before I get started, I forgot to mention that I am using Big Twist acrylic yarn that I got at Joanne Fabrics. And uh, just so you know, and it's a four-ply yarn, it is not the best quality yarn, but it's very soft. If you don't mind that it um, splits a little bit, I think the, you know, dealing with the splitting is worth it for the softness. Much softer to me than Red Heart. And I'm using my handy-dandy uh, size K, ten and a half or K. If you have other questions, I do highly suggest that you uh, watch from the beginning. <laughs> because this is a series, I'm not making each block a standalone block. If I've already taught you something in a previous video in this series, then I expect that you have already watched it. Just to save me some time, okay? Now we are going to start the swatch. For this stitch, you're going to chain an even number and you'll be working an odd number of stitches. And I'm letting you know that just in case you want to do this stitch for other reasons. I also want to mention that when I tell you how many stitches I used for the 12 inch square, I highly suggest that you do the same, do maybe a few rows and then put it down, let it sit for like an hour and then measure it to see. And if you're off, then either add two stitches or subtract two stitches, try it again, and then let it sit. There's nothing wrong with taking apart your work because I don't care if you do a, a swatch 
and measure that and then say, okay, I'll need this many stitches doesn't always work. And it's not always going to match mine because you and I don't have the same tension, right? I don't even have the same tension from block to block, sometimes not even from row to row. So just don't think that you're screwing up. You're not. All you need to do right is count an even number of chains. <laughs> I'm going to chain only 10 for this. So that was one. I pulled through. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. We chained even, so we're working on an odd number because we don't work in the one we just pulled the yarn through. So we start there. I'm going to do a foundation row for this one. So we're going to do a foundation row of just single crochet all the way across. And if you don't know these stitches, again, I have beginning videos to teach you this, but for uh, I, I show you how to do the chain, how to do the slip knot, the chain, stuff like that. So I'll have those videos in the description of this video. But, you know, single crochet, you go in, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. Since this is a little bit of a little bit loopy stitch where there's some spaces, I like to do a foundation just to make sure that first row is nice and finished looking. So we have nine single crochet because I chained ten. I don't bother to do the chain one anymore on a single crochet. Uh, unless I need to. So I just turn. Turn. See? See how easy that was? <laughs> Here's the stitch that we're going to be doing for every row, except the very last row will be a single crochet to match our foundation. You're going to put your hook in the very first V, the one that your yarn is coming out of, because we didn't do a chain one. You can do a chain one if you want, but I don't in, pull through. And this is where I kept getting screwed up. Once I did that and I yarned over again, I would want to just pull through like I'm doing a single crochet. But we're not doing that. So let's just start again. I'm going to show you. In, pull through, yarn over, go back in, pull through. And you have four loops. You can do that again if you want to do the regular bean, but we're not. So we're stopping at four loops. We're not going to six loops. Now you yarn over and pull through all, and then you're going to chain to close all that up. Let's do it again. Now we're going to skip the next one. and We're going here. So go in, pull through. Now yarn over go back in, pull through, yarn over and pull through all four loops and chain to lock that up. Skip. Let's go again. Notice I'm not yarning over first. I'm not, you know, doing like a double crochet. We just skip this chain. We're going here. Go in, pull through, yarn over, go back in and pull through. Yarn over and pull through those four loops and one chain to lock it up. You will get into the rhythm of it. Skipping and then the next one, go in, pull through. Yarn over, go in, pull through. And see, you can see your four loops. Yarn over, pull through all four loops and lock it up with a chain. Skip and you're going to end with that stitch that we just did. If you skip and there's like two more or there's only that one and you can't skip, then you did something wrong, take that row apart, start over until you can learn to see where you screwed up. So again, I skip and I'm in the very last stitch. It's the one that's got this little bump here. I Went in, pull through, yarn over, I go in, I pull through. I have four loops, and I'm going to go through all four. And I am indeed doing a chain at the end because I need to lock that up. 
But now some people here do another chain to turn. Some do two. I don't understand that. I'm doing none. I'm just locking up that stitch and I'm turning. Now we're going to continue doing this. And most people show you, you know, they separate and they say, go through this V right here. But then there's like another space there. And so I'm just going to tell you to look at the top. We're not going in that, you know, space where our yarn is coming out of. We're going here. So if you look down below, you can see our little bean here. And there's like a vertical piece of yarn there. That's the place we want to go. But I find it's just as easy to look at the top and go in. So go in, pull through, yarn over, go in, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all of those four. And one chain to lock it up. We're going to skip this next one. And we're going here. Again, let's look at it here. It's not this space. It's this little clump that we're calling the bean, <laughs> the mini bean. It's the space after that clump. Clump, space, vertical bar, right there, in. Pull through, yarn over, go back in, pull through, yarn over, pull through all four, lock it up. Again, we can see there's a big space there. It's under that. We don't want that. We're skipping that stitch. We're going into the next one, which happens to be between the bean and the vertical pole. In, pull through. Yarn over, go back in, pull through. Pull through all four, lock it up. Not there. Between the bean and the vertical piece of yarn, which is the skip, and there keep forgetting to stay under you. Go in, pull through. Yarn over. Go in, pull through. <laughs> pull through all four. Chain one to lock it up. Now sometimes it can be a little bit um, harder to see the last stitch. You got to pull back a little bit. Now see, I need to skip and do my stitch. So it ended up perfectly. I swear one time I had just one stitch left, could not figure out where my mistake was. I did take the whole row apart and start over, and, and it magically fixed itself. So, skipping, I'm going in this guy. I'm going to go there. There's that little bump, and I'm going to be going under there. Go in, pull through, yarn over, go back in, pull through, yarn over, go through all four, lock it up. Whoops. I wasn't good at locking it up there. I got carried away with my position of authority. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let me just do it over again. Because see the yarn? Oh, this isn't even that splitty yarn. This is Red Heart that I'm practicing with here. Okay, go in, pull through, yarn over, go in, pull through. It's this one right here that can get tricky that, you know, we don't, get the yarn to go through so just I kind of like pull on it up like that yarn over and pull through and then lock it up I have to do a chain one there just to you know lock all that shit up <laughs> let's do one more together and then I'll show you how I'm going to um, end and that's right I want my my bean stitch row to end on this side, when this is on my right, I'm going to end um, here. Because this is actually the right side. Because I did a foundation, usually the right side, for right-handers, I don't know how it works with left-handed people. But usually our tail is on the right-hand side when we're facing the right side. But since we did a foundation chain, uh, we want this to be on the left and we know we're looking at the right side and this is really a reversible stitch but I like my foundation row to be facing front as opposed to the back side of single crochet you don't need to worry about anything that I just said so we're turning and we're going here the very first one right after the bean the bean the vertical post 
between that. In, pull through. Yarn over, go back in, pull through. Yarn over, pull through all four. Chain to lock it up. Skip. Go here. Pull through. Yarn over, go in, pull through. Pull through all four. Chain. Skipping this guy. We're going after the bean. After the bean, before the vertical post. In. Um, up. Yarn over. Go back in. Pull through. Yarn over. Go through all four. Lock it up. We're skipping this guy. We're going in this guy. In. Pull through. Yarn over. Go back in. Pull through. Yarn over and pull through all four and chain. Skipping here. Oh, and see, we're at the end. We have our little bump right there. So, so far I've done a couple of very short rows the right way. <laughs> go in, pull through, yarn over, go in, pull through, yarn over, and go through all four loops chain to lock it in and turn. Now we're going to end. Let's just pretend that we've done 12 inches in, you know, wide and tall and that we're done. You want your little tail to be on the left. And again, I'm right-handed. Sorry folks, I don't even know a left-handed person in my life. So <laughs> I don't have a clue how it works for you. So now we're just going to do um single crochet across the entire top and we're you know not going in the one we just came out of because in a sense you know we did a chain one to turn because we had to do that chain one to lock this stuff in so it's going to be on the top of the bean you're going to go in and just do single crochet pull through and then pull through both and when I get to the next one I don't want to go in the space I want to actually go under the V because that's going to help it to not look so like lacy and holy and open on that last row. So you just go right under the V. You might have to wiggle it in there. And just do your single crochet right there. See the Vs? Maybe if I go here under. And in this case, I should have nine single crochets because, see, that one is a little bit harder, but it's worth going under it. And it's also harder for me because I have a, a camera on a tripod right here, right in front of my face, so I can't see what I'm doing. So you're just going to do a single crochet in every stitch. And that's going to finish uh, the block whenever you're done. i got to get some more yarn here. And... I'm almost done. Single crochet. And that would be the end, except for on the big block, I do go around with um, slip stitches all the way around. But that's how the stitches look. I really like it. They're, they're kind of like, you know, just, you see little beans, slanted beans. <laughs> okay, now let's look at my um, big square. The big square. I chained 40, so I worked 39 stitches. I would suggest if you're using the same kind of yarn, the same size hook, <laughs> try 40. I say do a couple of rows, maybe like at least, uh, this is like four rows right here. Uh, do your foundation and then do a few rows and let the yarn just relax. Let it rest for a little bit and then measure. Where's my ruler? A handy dandy ruler that I have had for ever. I've never known a time in my life that I didn't have this ruler. No, I'm sure I wasn't a, you know, a very young child, but I've had it for a long time. And you can see I'm at 12 inches. But I started with 40 and I was short. And then I said, okay, I'll add two, because you have to add an even number so that the pattern stays the same. And I swear, it was like 
this much too long. I was like, how is that possible? But it's all in the tension. So I said, I'm going back to 40. And I loosened up a little bit. And, um, you know, whatever I did, I got it so that I was happy. But now I'm going to be doing the... Um, oh, yes. So how many rows? Let's see. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8. You can kind of see like a little bit of a ridge. 22, 4, 6, 8, 30, 2, 33. So I think I did 33 rows, but don't worry about that. Just measure. And you want to kind of be like a half inch shorter. I had said just a little bit ago when you're like 12 inches long, you kind of want to be at, um, you know, 11 and a half because we're going to do the single crochet to end, and that'll bring you to 12. So let's see. I had already started working on my single crochet. Yeah, so I'm at about 12. So again, like I showed you in the little piece, when the tail is in your left hand for right-handers, was my hook. That's when you want to start your single crochet row. So I had already done it, and I said, okay, I'm going to stop. So I had done my, you know, bean stitch to here and turned. And then I just started doing single crochet all the way across. And I will just continue a little bit. And again, it's just under every stitch. And I've got that one there that, you know, can be a little bit harder to get through. But you're going to force yourself to do it. Single crochet, single crochet, and you should be um, ending with 39, assuming that worked for you. You know, starting with a chain of 40. And again, let's just not get so carried away, because I can, I can, it, you know, it's like I only added two stitches, two chains. How can that make it like an inch and a half longer? I mean, I don't. Oh, I don't know. All right, just let me get to the end. I'm getting close to the end. That's my last one. That little bump there lets me know that. And for anyone who's just doing this stitch, you know, for a scarf maybe or an afghan or whatever, uh, you don't have to do the single crochet foundation and ending. You don't have to do that, but I just think it looks more finished and uh, it gives you a better edge if you want to, you know, when you want to connect and things like that. Now I'm going to be doing my slip stitch all around. And for every block, it's different. For every block, you have to figure out where to stick your hook and uh, where to do that. I don't remember how I do it. Um, but I know that I'm going to be doing slip stitches. And again, don't worry about it. It's just going to give us a much nicer edge. I could go watch my first video and see how I did this, but I don't think I want to. I think I'm going to just chain for the corner, and I'm going to go in and do a slip stitch. That's how I'm doing it this time. And you can also look at the first uh, video, and I spaced it out. Whatever I have here, I have 39 stitches that I worked. I'm going to try to get 39 slip stitches on this edge. And you can go ahead and put like a pin every four inches and then say, okay, I have 39 divided by three because if you go every four inches, it's going to give you three sections. You could do 13 between the pins. I don't feel like doing all that. So I'm just going to eyeball it and, um, and go around. So it's just, again, I'm going to find a place to stick my hook and it's slip stitches all the way around and I'm not going to show you all this because I've already got it um, I see I went under just one strand I don't necessarily like to do that but sometimes that's just the way to do that and uh, let me go all the way around and I do uh, a slip stitch and then a chain and then a slip stitch in the same holes on the corners and I'll be back as soon as that's done and here's what I have. I am done. Now I do that slip stitch all the way around the block. 
I've seen some others do it, but they only do the two sides because those are the bumpy edges. But you'll notice when you do the slip stitch, it lays flat on top. And that's what I like because when we connect, if we connect just using the back loop, we have a nice little edge that finishes off the block. So just do it the way I do it. <laughs> you do whatever you want. And I don't know what else to say other than I do want to remind you, don't worry about the number of stitches, even here. I said to aim for 39. If you did 39 stitches in this direction, you'd like to maybe get 39 stitches in this direction. Makes it a little bit more square. But if you count and you didn't do it right, you don't have to take it all apart or just stick an extra stitch somewhere or decrease a stitch somewhere or just, you know, leave it at different numbers it doesn't matter it doesn't really uh, crocheted or knitted things are very forgiving that is it for this block I really like it um, and I promise oh I shouldn't ever promise but I I will come up with a join so we can start joining the you know blocks to create a row of three and then when we have another row of three we'll be adding it to this one and uh, I think you're going to end up liking the final product I don't know because I have no clue what the final product is going to be but we're gonna get there thank you so much for watching please subscribe so you can follow the rest of this series and my other series I do have a quilt block of the month going also and I will be doing uh, two Christmas blocks per month starting this month April and uh, through September and that's going to give us 12 uh, quilt blocks that you can use in a quilt or do whatever you want to do with them. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll be back with more soon. Bye!